Welcome to Magnify Him Church, located at 4509 Island Avenue in the Double Tree Hotel Liberty Room. Our Sunday services start with intercessory prayer at 1030, life-changing church at 1045. Mm-hmm. Then our main service starts at 12 o'clock noon oh, yeah. to 1.30 p.m. That ends out our services for today. All right. May the grace of God be with you always. Amen. verse 1. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. And we're going to be talking about idols this morning. We're going to be talking about idols this morning. Because a lot of times we think that an idol is someone or something that is not related to God. <laughs> we think that it is something that's the polar opposite of God. But a lot of times because of our human nature. An idol can be someone that's related to God. <laughs> can be someone that's in the church. Can be someone that's in the same spiritual realm as God. And so we're going to be talking about all types of idols this morning. We're talking about all types of idolatry this morning. Amen? And it begins. So all of you holy brothers and sisters, again, we're not talking to the world. When Paul wrote this, he was speaking to the Jews. But he says, all of you holy brothers and sisters, all of you believers who were called by God, think about Jesus who was sent to us and is the high priest of our faith. Jesus was faithful to God as Moses was in God's family. Jesus has more honor than Moses just as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. Every house is built by someone but the builder of everything is God himself. Moses was faithful in God's family as a servant and he told what God would say in the future but Christ is faithful as a son over God's house and we are God's house if we confidently maintain our hope and so what Paul was dealing with at the time when he wrote this is much like what we deal with today. Jesus is not here. Jesus is with God the Father right now. But he is still the high priest of our faith. He is still the author and the finisher of our faith. But many times we allow other people and other things to take his place. And we wonder why we can't seem to get closer to him. We wonder why we just seem for the last three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it may be, we seem to be in the same place. We seem to be wanting the hunger and wanting more of God. But we're too caught up and worshiping other little gods that we can't see them. Too many of our Christian brothers and sisters today are wrapped up in worshiping the choir director, the pastor, the Sunday school teacher, all these other people in the church because they speak so well they call me up on the phone and they talk to me and they show me attention. I like the way they smell. <laughs> I like the way they dress. I like when they speak from the word of God, how they make me feel about myself. 
See, that's what has allowed a lot of these preachers and pastors and, 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 and deacons and other teachers in the church today to become idols and, and, and take the place of Jesus Christ in so many of their saints' eyes. Now, it may seem that I'm coming from a place of putting the blame on the preachers, on the other teachers, on the other pastors. But the blame doesn't fall on them. The blame falls on the people. And that's what Paul is talking about this morning. You are in charge of who you choose to follow. You are in charge of who your role model is. You are in charge of what you choose to believe. And if you choose to follow behind man, if you choose to listen more to the man than to listen to the God behind the man, well, then you're going to cause yourself to be distant from your high priest. And that's what Paul is talking about this morning. He's talking about closing the gap. Closing the gap. Your relationship should be one-to-one -one with Jesus Christ. And then your brothers and your sisters in the faith for all around you. And that's one of the benefits that you have of being a Christian. We talked about this a little bit this morning in Sunday school, but other religions, they don't, they don't have this. That's why they're false religions. They don't have that connection to the one true living God. They can't go to him. They have to seek him by other people, by other means. Even in the Muslim faith. They worship Muhammad. Buddhists. Worship the great Buddha. All these other religions, they are little gods. They are little things that were made by God. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> you sit up here and worship a pa your pastor or your minister or somebody else, and they were made by God. You listen to all these other people that pull you away. They pull you away from God. And they were made by God. And with what they're saying and what they're doing doesn't even naturally have to be wrong. I've seen this so many times. People will fall in love with a, a pastor, a preacher, a, a teacher, anybody that they can in the church. Okay? They will fall in love with them because of how they look, because of what they say, because all these different things. And they stop listening to Jesus. They no longer open up their word. But they just listen to that person that they've fallen behind. Idolatry. It is so big in our churches today. But again, the blame does not fall on the preachers, the pastors, the other officers in the church. The blame falls on the people. You have to have that relationship with God. Yes, sir. It's not about the house that was built. It's about the builder that built the house. And what happens so many times is this person that we allow. See, the devil is very slick these days. He's very slick these days. You come into church, you come to God, 
Maybe you were falling away. Maybe you never even accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you just done it. And what happens is he, you're so excited. You're so excited to get into the church. But he distracts you by sending this person <laughs> your way and you start focusing on the wrong things. Before you know it, you're so wrapped up and following behind what pastor said, what minister said. And you ain't even checked and seen what God said. People don't even open their Bibles no more. They just go along with whatever the minister was saying at the time. Whatever the preacher was saying. Yeah, I guess it's right. He said it, so I guess it's right. We're in, we're in the day and the age of false teachers like it's nobody's business. We are in the day and the age of idolatry and of people wanting to worship and be lovers of themselves. They're going to preach and teach whatever makes you feel good. And because of that, you will be drawn to them. I mean, who don't like somebody that make them feel good? <laughs> you want to feel good. Like Holly Berry said, can you make me feel good? <laughs> I know I'll wake y'all up with that one. <laughs> you know, we all want somebody that we can follow behind that can capture our attention, that can lead us to where we're trying to be. But Jesus Christ is the one that will lead you into all truth, yes, not the man, not the woman. Yes, Jesus Christ and him alone. Amen. And we gotta stop worshiping these people that may have done some great things while they were down here. <laughs> I hear people all the time want to talk about former pastors. <laughs> oh, my former pastor. I ain't going to say his name in case they're watching. But they, <laughs> they want to talk about him all the time. Oh, my former pastor, my former pastor. He's done his work. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What's your work? <laughs> what has Jesus Christ done for you? Tell me what Jesus is doing in your life. That's what I want to know about. Don't tell me about what somebody else is doing for God and about how much you love them. Tell me what Jesus Christ is doing in your life. That's what I want to know. And you got to be careful because this word right here, this word right here that we preach in front that we talk about, it'll cut you up. It'll cut you up. But it's going to get you right. It's going to get you right. Jesus Christ taught some hard lessons to people. Taught some hard lessons. I can't imagine how the woman at the well felt. <laughs> Have Jesus call her out like that. <laughs> she thought he didn't know. But at the same time, he didn't condemn her. He just called out the sin that was in her life. And Jesus Christ, he's always the first to say throughout all the scriptures, don't bring no glory to me. The glory goes to the Father. We got to be the same way. We got to be the same way. Don't allow someone else to become so attracted to you because they see the God in you. Make sure you take that glory and give it right to the Father and get that person's eyes off of you. Because you don't want to become their idol. Just like Paul is speaking to these people that were so caught up in worshiping Moses. No, 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 no. <laughs> Moses was a great man that did great things that God commanded of him. But Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus Christ is the builder of the house. Moses built the great house. <laughs> but Jesus Christ is the builder. So, how do we make sure we don't fall into the trap of idolatry? How do we make sure 
we don't worship other idols. Let's go down to verse number 12. It says, so brothers and sisters, be careful that none of you has an evil, unbelieving heart that will turn you away from the living God. Be careful who you hang around. How many times Amen. do we preach this? Right. I would have put a title on the sermon, but pastor might be, might be saying, all right, I'm giving you too many sayings, sons. But if you hang with a lame, <laughs> there it is. Y'all already know it. If you hang with a lame, you're going to develop a limp. You got to stop hanging out with people that don't have the same faith as you. Amen. Yes, sir. Woo. Absolutely. It's not going to work. It will never work out. Amen. Never. Amen. They don't have the same faith that you have. And what will happen over the course of time is you will begin to fall away. <laughs> you will begin to fall away. You're not going to draw them closer. You're not going to draw them closer. Why? Because they've already made their decision. And this thing is too powerful. This thing is too powerful for you to play around with it. I've seen people singing on the choir, reading from the word of God, confessing with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and fall away. Amen. Fall away. Fall away. Well, I don't know if I never really believed that to begin with. They told me a lie. You know, the biggest thing they want to tell you today. <laughs> this is the biggest thing they want to tell you today. But Jesus Christ, that's the white man's religion. You just follow him behind what the white man gave you. Now, I don't know about you in this congregation full of colored people. I don't know, but in case y'all on YouTube and don't know, we're not in Montana somewhere, Utah. <laughs> we were right in Philadelphia. <laughs> but Jesus Christ has done so much for me. So I can't speak on somebody else bringing this religion in when I know that this has worked for me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know about former pastors and other deacons and choir members and all that stuff and how they work for me. But I do know that Jesus Christ <laughs> works for me. And that's what we have to do. We have to make sure that our relationship is with Jesus Christ and he is the one that we are following in his word and not someone else's. Amen. So again, he warns, he says, make sure that none of you have an evil heart. If somebody is in your congregation, if somebody is in your close circle, sowing doubts of unbelief, you either leave the circle or you kick them out your circle. But one or the other got to happen. One or the other. Somebody got to go. <laughs> you can't have that in your house. Too, too much relies on faith. And if you are not surrounding yourself with the truth, strengthening your faith, you will fall away. It's just that simple. You can't hang around with unbelief. It's just right there. It says it. I mean, we're just reading from the Bible. It says an unbelieving heart will turn you away from the living God. These are people that are already in the faith. But you hang with unbelievers and they will pull you away. I can't understand someone that leaves the truth. That's stupid. That means you never really got deep enough to find out what you were really in to begin with. Because if you ever gave Jesus a try, you would know that he's the truth. No one has ever, has ever 
tasted of Jesus and tried anything else. Amen. Never, never. But if you're too busy trying to taste the pastor, if you're too busy trying to taste the minister, if you're too busy trying to chase the deacon, well, guess what? You ain't going to never get to taste Jesus. Amen. Talking about idols this morning. Idols. Talking about how unbelieving hearts will keep you away from God. Paul says, but encourage each and every, he says, but encourage each other every day while it is today. Amen. Help each other so none of you will become hardened because sin has tricked you. Yes. We need one another. Yes. You can't do this by yourself. Amen. When we are going through, we have to encourage one another. That's why it's so important. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When we hear today about Christians being depressed. Yes. It's something that we're starting to hear more and more and more of. Sister LBC uh, mentioned it. A depressed Christian. Now, to me, that sounds like it doesn't make sense. Well, how does how does a Christian get depressed? What? Huh? When you keep your mind on Jesus Christ, I've never known that to happen, but how, how does that happen? I'm gonna explain it to you right now how it happens. It happens because you allow the enemy to isolate you. When you don't speak to your close circle, to your other people that you can trust, that share in the same faith and the same belief system as you, that are not idols, that are people that are going to direct you to Jesus Christ. When you don't speak about what you're going through. When you don't ask them for prayer. When you don't open up to someone else. Right. Satan isolates you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know why? Why he has you isolated. You're sitting in the corner by yourself. And he's steady flooding you. Flooding you with all his thoughts. With all his plans. Yes with what he wants for your life. That is how you get depressed. That is how you get depressed. But it starts, it starts by you hanging around people with unbelief. Listen, they have no problem cutting you off when you try to tell them about coming to church. <laughs> When you try to tell them about Jesus, they have no problem telling you, I don't want to hear that. They have no problem telling you, oh, my phone ringing, hold on. But you sit up here and hang with him and entertain everything that the enemy has for you. Causing you to lose faith. So why not start turning the favor? You know, I hate to be I hate to be so real sometimes, but I tell people like they say in the streets, if we cool, we gang gang. <laughs> if we cool with each other and you believe in Jesus Christ, then guess what? We gang gang. But I've learned to start cutting people off. Who do not share in the same faith, because I already know how this is going to hang out. I mean, I'm sorry, I already know how this is going to end. I already know how this is going to turn out. And it's not going to turn out with you and me supping together with our Lord and Savior. No, it's going to turn out with you pulling me away from my Lord and Savior. So you got to cut them off. Now, if you bang with Jesus, we gang gang. It's that simple. <laughs> Verse 14. <laughs> oh, Lord. We don't want no congregation of gangbangers now. Y'all calm down. I don't want y'all out there throwing up, uh, throwing up signs and wearing colors. And <laughs> 
But verse 14, I'm going to close out with verse 14. He says, we all share in Christ if we keep till the end the sure faith we had in the beginning. You ever see how you feel when we all come in here together? Why do we why, why do we love each other's company so much? Why do we feel good when we walk in God's house together? There it is. There it is, Sister LBC. We gang gang. We all believe in Jesus Christ. We already know. Listen, if I'm coming in and I know I got some issues, I can't wait to get in here because I know my pastor going to pray for me. I know my sister going to hug me as soon as I walk in the door. I know my brother going to dap me up when I walk in and I see him sitting up there. When we share in the faith together, we can do nothing but win. We can do nothing but win. It is the world's job outside them doors. I'm telling you, when you walk out there, it is their job to try and create reasonable doubt. <laughs> we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Reasonable doubt. The enemy just wants to create a little bit of unbelief. Because if he can create a little bit of unbelief, he knows he got you. So many people have signed their own death sentence. So many people. You may have been a little bit overweight. Why are you running around talking about you got diabetes? That's right. That's right. We don't claim those types of things. But when we allow unbelief to set in and we are not strong within, within ourselves, this is what happens. This is what happens. That's another reason why when we surround ourselves with one another, we get stronger. Miracles have happened in this church because we share in the faith together. And that is the way it ought to be with everyone when we leave out of here. If you can't have someone at your job that shares in the same faith as you, if you can't have someone uh, 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 in your house sometimes that shares in the same faith with you, you gotta, there's got to be somebody in your church. There's got to be somebody close to you. That you can share him with. Because without it, if you start relying on the world, making idols of other people and other things and following behind them, you are slowly moving away from the faith. And I'm going to say this before I close out. I told you all how we living in the day and age of false preachers, false teachers, people who are lovers of themselves. One of the biggest things they try to do to you now is they try to convince you that their way is right by works. <laughs> what do I mean by that? They want to tell you if you get a couple dollars <laughs> that somehow now that is the key to your faith. They remove Jesus Christ from the equation. The only thing they want to talk about is the laws of attraction. See, we're going to expose it this morning. We're going to expose it this morning. There is a such thing as the law of attraction. The Bible talks about it. The Bible talks about it. That's why it says, be careful what you think and be careful what you say because your words have power. You can manifest things. You can bring them about. But that's not what saves you. <laughs> That's completely different. The law of attraction is not <laughs> what Jesus Christ came down for. <laughs> but they use the law of attraction in the Bible to suck people in. They want to, Satan wants to pull you away from the truth <laughs> so that he can convince you of a lie. But guess what? When you get sick, when trials come your way, when trouble comes your way, when your son, your brother, your family get in trouble, 
That law of attraction can't save you then. <laughs> that money that they, that they told you how to manifest can't help you then. And you don't know who to turn to. So let us remember, saints, that this is all about Jesus Christ. And let us remember to kick to the curb. <laughs> Anybody. That does not share in the same faith. Because life is but a vapor. Life is but a vapor. Amen. Solomon wrote that when he, when he wrote Ecclesiastics. He said life is but a vapor. That means it's but a short time. But eternity is forever. Yes. So if it costs you some relationships down here. So be it. So be it. To maintain your eternal life. And trust and believe this. <laughs> Anybody you lose down here because they don't want to share in the same faith as you. Because they don't believe what you believe. God never leaves you lonely. <laughs> he will replace your friends with some new friends. <laughs> Amen. And with that, y'all can stand. Who's able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. 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 Amen.